Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bachelor Cooking. Uh, long awaited, much requested, uh, yeah. So I was gonna do a proper episode, like a full on episode. Uh, I was gonna make a pie, and it was gonna be awesome. And then I realized how long it would take, and I was really hungry. So instead, I ate leftover Indian from last night, but there wasn't very much. So I'm too hungry. So now I'm going to invent something to add to it. So I had some croissants in my fridge, left over from the weekend. So I've just whacked them in the oven like that. Oh yeah, it's a handy tip. You can just cut the thing in half because you need to put the croissants on the metal when you roast it. So if you just cut it in half, then you can do two at a time. It's on, on and some temperature, doesn't really matter. It's only a grill. So I have no idea what I'm making. So I'm just going to add stuff to it. Now I've just had a fair amount of carbs. So I think I need more meat. So I'm going to see what I've got. Got some bacon. Some tomato, I've got some cheese, and I've got some salami. I've got some mushrooms too, but it'll probably involve cooking. Um, I bugger it, we'll do that too. So, I'm gonna get our trusty fry pan out. Like it on the high heat. Throw some olive oil in there. Not too much. Throw some bacon in first. So this is shortcut bacon, which is uh, also rindless, basically, so that I can do this without having to cut anything. I can just whack it in the pan. So I've still got some bacon left. So if you remember from previous episodes, I like to clean up on the go. And the best way to deal with meat that's uh, just been opened, is to put it in a sandwich bag, seal it up, so I need the fridge. So, as you can probably hear, this is quite hot. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit so it's spit all over the place. Now, I did discover this a couple of weeks ago. I designed to put it over your fry pan so that things don't uh, spit out of it all over the place. I'm going to whack it on the top. In the past, I discovered that it doesn't actually work very well, but it's better than none. Pack it up as I go. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is throw some mushrooms in. Again, these are pre sliced from Woolworths. Again, just makes cooking a lot quicker. I'm just going to throw a handful of those in. I'm not that hungry. Alright, next we're just going to grab a tomato. These are Roman tomatoes, not that it really matters. Going to get a knife. Um, you generally want a thin knife for slicing tomato. Though in this case, we're just doing it in a half, so it doesn't really matter. Do it in half, take that off. Uh, we're now going to fry these tomatoes. I generally like to put them with the sliced side, so the flat side, up first so that we can finish it off on the downside. Alright, now we're just going to... spatula. You always want to use a plastic spatula on a Teflon frying pan so that you don't scratch it. Technically, Teflon is uh, poisonous if it gets over a high temperature. Uh, so you don't want to scratch any off and eat it. 
So that's going well, but it needs a little more heat. Okay, so that's pretty much all I'm going to have. I'm just going to have that on, on some croissants. So I can clean up as I go. I'm going to add some cheese to it in that too. You know what? I've got the salami out, so I might as well chuck that on the frying pan as well. Although, I think I'm going to slice it so I can mix it with the uh, with the mushrooms and we'll make a, a bit of a, almost like a salsa. So we'll grab a cutting board, <coughs> using a plastic cutting board. These are pretty good, they're light and thin. Uh, you generally want to cut um, plastic um, cutting boards instead of wood, because wood can absorb the um, absorb the juices basically, um, which is not good. So, especially if you're cutting meat, you don't want juices of meat getting in there because you can get salmonella and that sort of thing. So, I'll just move this camera over. So, I've just cut, I've just grabbed about three of these and I cut it in half, put, wrapped it over it on itself, and now I'm just cutting. Just little chunks. Alright, so now I'll just separate them out so they don't stick to each other. And I'll just chuck them in the frying pan as well. So, so just mix it up with the mushrooms. Bacon, get that alright, time to flip, pull out the pot. Alright, now I might just add a little something to this, whatever you're calling this. I'll just turn it down a little since it is spitting. Yeah, just sort of make it almost into a sauce. It's a bit more like a salsa. Uh, let's see what we've got. Alright, so I got some random things from my cupboard. Got some uh, oyster sauce, tomato paste, and some sweet soy sauce. Who knows if this tastes any good? But let's add a bit and see what happens. So there's not much there. So we won't add too much of these. Good stuff, tomato paste, you can add it to all sorts of things, pizzas and any other kind of dish you're making really. A lot of that. And a touch of sweet soy. Right, just mix it around a little. Okay, now we can check on the, actually it's a good time to flip the tomatoes back onto the, the flat sides. So this will do most of the cooking for you, of the tomatoes. Alright, so we'll just check on the croissants. And they've been in there too long, but we'll uh, turn it off. Only supposed to be about four to six minutes apparently. Um, I usually find it does take a bit longer, but in this case, it seems like we've done a bit too long. So we'll pull around the hoverboard, see what they look like, see if they're still edible. Yeah, they definitely look like too well done. Take a look at that. So, if I really wanted to, I could probably cut them in half and eat the bottom half or something, but sounds like too much effort. I'm just going to put some toast on. Make 
I just with Brad you'll notice it's on the bench here. Um, that's generally a pretty good place to put it. Um, you don't want to put it inside your fridge because it can go stale. And if you put it on top of your fridge, uh, your fridge, you know, uh, makes the inside cold, and so as a result, the outside gets hot. So especially at the back of your fridge, it produces a lot of heat. So that flows up over the top. And so if your bread's up there, it'll get hot, which means that it, uh, it's more likely to get molar. So it's better to keep it off to the side. Alright, so this is nearly done. We really just have to wait for the toast to be done. Looking good. Uh, okay, a little tip. I'll just uh, just reuse this. And what you do, if you get some uh, paper towel, so you just get some of the standard paper towel, get two two uh, pieces of it, fold it over, place it there. Then once you put uh, oily things like bacon on top of them, they tend, so the paper towel tends to suck the oil right out, which is a really nice thing to do. You generally don't want all the oil in your food. I'm now just tilting it so that all the oil runs to the bottom while trying to keep the food at the top separated. We're pretty much done now, just about ready to put it on the plate. Don't think I need to give you instructions on how to make toast, I'm sure you can figure that out. Alright, so another good thing to do with the, the, uh, with the bacon is uh, It'll suck nicely the oil from the bottom, as you can see, but it's usually a bit left on top. So you can flip it over, and you can actually pat it down. Because you could leave it for a lot longer, but if you do that, it tends to get cold. So better just give it a pat. And it's basically good to go. And we can start putting it onto the plate. Separate the oil before, we'll just make sure it's separated and then we will whack it on the plate. Not too uh, ceremonious about it, just whack it on. Alright, make sure the hot plate's off, it is, and we're good to go. Alright, let's give it a test. I think the uh, we all know what bacon and tomato and toast tastes like, but let's taste this uh, little salsa thing we made. Mmm, that's really good. It's probably quite fattening, it's quite nice because of the uh, salami, but it's really good. Mmm, highly recommend. And that's it. Hopefully I'll get around to making the pie in the next day or so. And um, we'll record that too. Thanks for tuning in.